the great Spanish hope Juan Ayuso won his first world tour at just 21 years of age, becoming the second youngest cyclist in history to win in the Basque country after the legendary Gino Bartoli. And then his compatriot Carlos Rodriguez won the stage victory and second overall in its Zulia 2024. A minor triumph for Ineos, but a victory, which is already something in this fateful season for the British. However, what should have been a Spanish party, and on Dave Brailsford bus, quickly turned into dark clouds. Beyond the Spaniards, few were celebrating the victory in the Zulia of one of the most promising and important riders in the peloton. At least not since the crash on the descent of the Olierta two days ago, in which Jonas Vingegaard, Remco Evenepoel, Primoz Roglic, Jay Vine and Steph Kras suffered serious injuries that will keep them out for several weeks or even months. That's months without being able to get on a bike. There were many who dared to speak out, but the ever-clean French riders, as always, are the ones who went just a step further with some controversial statements on Twitter. There was Antomarché Vonti rider Lilian Calmejan. The stage winner in the Tour de France assured everyone that these types of crashes happened, in 80% of the cases, because of the final bottles. And he even attached an icon of a test tube full of chemicals. These are something that the riders took in the final kilometres of each competition. He went on to clarify this by insisting that he wasn't talking about drugs. But Maël Guégan, a cyclist with the CIC Nantes Atlantique, a continental team, shed a little more light on the matter by telling everyone that caffeine was one of the reasons Calmejean wanted to point out, and that of course it was widespread in the peloton. And it was then that the Spanish newspaper, Marca, known for its rather racist front pages, or for giving more publicity to Cristiano Ronaldo's latest hairstyle than to the latest stage of the Tour de France, they decided to go further into this controversy, gaining numerous clicks and at the same time bringing us some surprising data that until now many of you will not have been aware of. First of all, the journalist Nacho Labarga and his interns asked the former winner of the Tour de France, who tested positive for salbutamol, but produced just in time the necessary TUE, Oscar Pereiro. The cyclist who admitted selling a stage of the Tour to George Incapi for 50,000 euros did not dare to say what Calmejean's words meant, because if the Frenchman means what many think, we could be facing the biggest scandal in cycling for many years. However, as these cheaters of the past often do, they blame other situations and try to conceal with dirty lies. Pereiro claims that nowadays the problem is that so many teams are fighting for the stage wins, and that in his epoch there was only Seiko of the wife abuser Mario Cipollini who prepared for the stage wins and controlled things in a beastly way. This is a total lie since Telecom with Jan Ulrich and Bianca Rees often led out sprints, Fasa Bortolo had Ferretti's aggressive tactics, there was Quick Step with Steels and Svarada and Bonin and other legendary dopers, or there was Robbie McEwen's Lotto. They were there involved in every single sprint finish in the most important races on the calendar. Oh, don't lie, Pereiro, don't lie! However, the Galician is not lying when he talks about going 100% in the vast majority of stages nowadays, and in his epoch, that of the doped Phonak and Operation Puerto, things were much slower. You know, it's all down to the improvement in materials. However, the article in the Marca pamphlet decided to go further still when it saw that other riders who tested positive for doping, such as the no longer doper Samuel Sanchez or Birillo or Contratrol team member Carlos Barredo, did not want to comment on Calmejean's words. But auxiliaries and doctors from other teams, suitably anonymous, but we imagine they were Spanish because of the origin of the newspaper, were willing to talk about the famous final bottles mentioned by the Antomarché rider. For these whistleblowers who appear with their voices distorted and with the lights off covering their faces, there are about 120 riders in the current peloton who use these final bottles when previously only a very small number of riders used them, and then that was very occasionally. But now, everyone wants to win. These are nice words, and they make me think about Bianca Rees, friend of the channel and sparkling bald man, when he decided to try Epo years after only a privileged few could enjoy it. 
But what do those final bottles consist of? What products do they contain within? For these anonymous doctors and auxiliaries, the final bottles are small containers of 50 or 75 millilitres, containing a mixture of concentrated carbohydrates mixed with legal stimulants such as caffeine or taurine. Can you imagine Primoz Roglic in his Red Bull jersey at the Tour de France, drinking a can from his sponsor and justifying that it gives him wings to fly on the Galibier? It could happen, and it would be a perfect marketing strategy. But it's too bad that coffee or Red Bull is used by so many of his rivals. These aberrations are totally legal and allowed by the UCI of the Felon David Le Partion. He prefers to talk about giving yellow and red cards as in soccer, rather than banning commercial stimulants to cyclists. But if these stimulants are being taken, and taken in massive quantities, it's being done because it works and really causes a performance boost for the cyclists. But of course, consulting the newspaper archives, we see that in the past these mixtures were far, far worse, and the final bottles were totally different. Twelve years ago, the gringo rider who was going to break records but could not because he lost UCI protection due to Lance Armstrong's confession, Taylor Finney, had already declared in Velo Nation that several riders mixed those glucose gels with caffeine and tramadol or other crushed painkillers, which for him was a real shame and a clear exogenous performance enhancement allowed by law. He was not alone. The late Liu Vestra, the Dutch beast who helped Vincenzo Nibali win a Tour de France, and according to many media outlets that was under the care of Michele Ferrari, he claimed in the Dutch Volkskrankt media that, even for time trials in small town races, he mixed tramadol tablets with caffeine pills. He claimed that he used tramadol because in 2016 it was allowed, and it improved his performance. And he claimed that if he didn't take it, someone else would. The classic excuse that Lance made fashionable years ago, and being fair, it is as realistic as life itself. But it wasn't just confined to them. There was also the former Team Sky rider, the doping-sanctioned Jonathan Tiernan Locke, who commented to Cycling News in 2016 that the doping doctor Richard Freeman had offered him tramadol during the 2013 World Championships. And not only that, but the doper Bobby Julik was handing out the famous drug to other pedalists as if it were candy at the door of a school. Three failed cyclists and three testimonies that made clear the use of tramadol and rare mixtures in the peloton went on in the last 12 years. But this investigation does not end here. It is the newspaper marker who, without citing any source, insists that those final bottles full of caffeine and tramadol were consumed in the Sky Team of Chris Froome, Bradley Wiggins or Geraint Thomas, among others, to reduce the feeling of tiredness in the final kilometres. Of course, they are not talking about doping. But if these words were true, we would be talking about real hypocrisy and some shame on the part of the geranium Luke Rowe, Valtpools and all the other sky cyclists who mocked and insulted Narito Quintana for taking Tramadol. Thomas went so far as to say it was a shame that Narito would be competing in Grand Tours in 2024. Now look, if you also took Tramadol, we demand a public apology to Nairo Quintana. And if you haven't, well, I hope you will talk to the Spanish media, closely linked to Movistar. Talk to Marca, clear up the problems. The Marker article ends with a bizarre conclusion, saying that today's riders are using the same mixture that has been used in the peloton for decades, only without tramadol. Now, the most fantastic conclusion of all is this comment from a user who claims that he makes a living from cycling today after having been a professional. Yes, he says that Kalmajan doesn't exactly mean glucose and caffeine. He means other things. Too bad this user dare not show his face. Marca es un pamfleto. Well, here, if you want, you have your space to tell everything you know. We'll be listening, and we will be grateful.